recognize that drug discovery is incredibly expensive, it's incredibly slow, and it's incredibly risky. I think it's unreasonable for us to expect any private organization or the pharmaceutical industry to concentrate their resources on all common chronic diseases, you know, dementia, cancer, inflammatory diseases, obesity, diabetes, and for them to work on all rare diseases, there's 7,000 of these, and to work on all potential infectious diseases, and importantly, to have a stockpile of vaccines for each of these in case there's an outbreak. Well, I think you, that just isn't going to happen. No, you very fairly point out the scale and range of different problems facing uh, researchers in, in the healthcare area, but, but surely the point is this. We first learned about Ebola four decades ago, and it then was obvious it was a terribly dangerous virus. So four decades on, the question is, have pharmaceutical companies not poured resources and research effort into Ebola simply because it appeared to involve very poor countries with very little commercial potential? Uh, I, I'm sure that's a reason, but I don't think we can accuse private industries of that. I think the thing is, whenever we have a health crisis, I think governments have to come together quickly. They have to assess scenarios. I think they have to assess risk. They need to come up with a clear plan, have clear accountability and leadership, but importantly, ensure that there's adequate funding. So you, you're, I, you're pinning the, the responsibility and the blame, if you like, if that's the right word, on government. I absolutely am. I, I do not think we can expect industry to uh, have, as I said, stockpiles of vaccines for all these diseases. But, I but, do think, you know, we, as you say, we had the outbreak in March. Uh, do I believe that there's been a clear plan? I'm not convinced. Has it been coordinated? Is there clear accountability and leadership? I'm not convinced. Has there been adequate funding? Absolutely not. Mm. So, uh, obviously, people watching this, particularly in West Africa, but probably all over the world, will want to know, where are we now? You know, GlaxoSmithKline have just said that despite the best hopes, uh, there isn't going to be a vaccine from them for at least a year, if not two. So you follow the science very carefully. What's our best hope right now? Well, I think in the short term, we've got to do everything that's now being done at last to contain the disease, stop it spreading, and look after the patients and minimize deaths, etc. There's clearly going to be economic consequences in the countries affected. We need to help those countries appropriately, etc. In Hopefully in 18 months, 24 months, we will have a vaccine and then hopefully we can start a, a large programme in those countries that are most affected. I mean, th this is important. You, you seem to be very confident there will be a vaccine. You're, you're saying the science of Ebola is so straightforward that unlike HIV AIDS, for example, you can say with certainty that there will ultimately, given the right research effort, be a successful vaccine. Uh, I believe now that with the resources that are being applied, the urgency that's being recognized and the funding that's being made available and the expertise that's coming together, I'm pretty confident that we will get a vaccine. But I think here there are some important lessons actually. You know, yeah. if, I th if I think in terms of antibiotics, you know, our chief medical officer, Sally Davis, for the past two years has highlighted that this is a crisis. We desperately need a new antibiotic. Now, I'm not convinced in the past two years, globally, we've made significant progress. You know, are we closer to a new antibiotic? I'm not convinced. Right. And again, I think when we have a global crisis like this, we have to come up with a clear plan. We have to have clear accountability leadership. And importantly, we need to ensure adequate funds. Otherwise, it will not happen. Yeah. Recognize that drug discovery is incredibly expensive. It's incredibly slow and it's incredibly risky. I think it's unreasonable for us to expect any private organization or the pharmaceutical industry to concentrate their resources on all common chronic diseases, you know, dementia, cancer, inflammatory diseases, obesity, diabetes, and for them to work on all rare diseases, there's 7,000 of these, and to work on all potential infectious diseases, 
and importantly to have a stockpile of vaccines for each of these in case there's an outbreak. Well, I think you, that just isn't going to happen. No, you very fairly point out the scale and range of different problems facing uh, researchers in, in the healthcare area, but, but surely the point is this. We first learned about Ebola four decades ago, and it then was obvious it was a terribly dangerous virus. So four decades on, the question is, have